Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. We're out here in the Tonto National Forest and we're doing a no random contacts video today. We are gonna skip some of those intermediate uh, concentric circles of communications and jump straight to how we can communicate from one state to our neighboring state. We'll come back and revisit the other ones like within the state and more of the county stuff, but there's an opportunity that came my way to do a uh, targeted contact in a combo window with another YouTuber and uh, he was traveling. He's in Utah right now. I'm in Arizona and he wanted to see if we could plan out a contact in advance. So perfect for this no contact or no random contact series. So the mission objective was one, to establish an HF contact 265 miles point to point at a targeted combo window, which is October uh, 1st at uh, 1500 UTC, which is 8 a.m. local time, Arizona time. Uh, I have about 10 minutes before I have to try this. Uh, I brought my Yaesu FT818ND, and for this exercise, I built a, a custom dipole antenna. It was based on a design I did much earlier when I talked about uh, Envis. And um, I know that we're gonna get super technical here, but basically, given the fact that we are so close to each other, and HF typically has a property that allows you to make very distant or DX contacts, we're using a technique called NVIS, or Near Vertical Incident Skywave. And all that really means is we're gonna change the way the RF takes off so that it doesn't really skip all the nearby states. Uh, I don't wanna go into the East Coast or into the Pacific. Instead, I wanna hit uh, 265 miles north of my position in Utah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 40 meter dipole and take it from the recommended half wavelength, um, 20 meters of height, which is 66 feet, I can't do that. And we're gonna drop it way low. Typically for Envis, they say you should be about one-tenth on the low end. Uh, so on 40 meters, that'd be four meters, which is, I don't know, about 13 feet. I'm not even gonna go that high. Um, I'm literally gonna be running this thing at five feet at the apex and about three to four feet on the ends. So we'll see if this works. Um, it has worked for me in the past. And the way that we came up with our combo plan was to establish uh, three HF frequencies. Our primary is uh, figures 7.285 megahertz. Our alternate is 7.265, and our contingency is 7.245. So if we get on the air and anybody is on that frequency, we're just gonna move down to the next one. If for some reason all three of those uh, fail, we're gonna try VHF and try to basically do something called APRS. I'm skeptical on whether that's gonna work, mostly because I am very far from the nearest station. It's over 45 miles, and I just have this little HT. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. And uh, the exchange is pretty straightforward. We just need to exchange um, our local uh, temperature in Fahrenheit. So not a big deal. So let me go ahead and get going here, and uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully I don't lose any recording. And then um, after that exercise, we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of an actual after action report. All right, guys, let's go ahead and try our primary fre frequency. I'm gonna try to get a hold of uh, Mike. Kilo Charlie 8 Oscar Whiskey Lima from Kilo Tango 1 Romeo Uniform November. A little bit of interference on this one. Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, how are you doing this morning? Real good. Stand by. Let me turn on the recorder here since we got contact. All right, guys. We finally did it. First attempt. This is awesome. Tango 1, Romeo, uniform, November from Kilo Charlie 8, Oscar Whiskey Lima, 40 meters. Hey, good morning, Mike. This is Kilo Tango 1, Romeo, uniform, November. Your signal is good. You are about a 5757 five, QSL. Okay, real good. You are also, you're between a 5 and 5 and 5 and 7 here in the Bryan Head, Utah. Elevation about 10,000 feet, where my current temperature is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Back to you. Roger, roger. Yeah, you're going into the Tonto National Forest, Delta Mike 33. The temperature out here is 88 Point seven degrees Fahrenheit, QSL. Roger, 88.7 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 
Let me just confirm, I sent you a message on ACRS uh, via RF. Uh, did you get that message? Uh, negative, I haven't really checked. Uh, I went ahead and sent you one via SMS gate, but I have not received a response. Okay, no problem. I'll take, after we clear this QSO here on 40 meters, I'll shoot you another APRS just for the sake of testing it. Uh, we'll use SMS GCE. Right. Very happy that we were able to make contact with 100% portable operations here today, and I'm literally operating from the backyard of the uh, the cabins that we're staying at here in uh, in Bryant Head. Back to you. Very good, and your signal has just improved. You are uh, a solid 5.8, uh, five maybe 5.9 five now. And uh, yeah, you should see my setup. I showed people the uh, 40 meter dipole that I built with the uh, Cobra heads. It literally is five feet at the apex and four feet on the lowest end. And people said we could not make a 265 mile contact and especially on our first go. So congratulations, Mike. This was a fantastic contact. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the camp and uh, radio system setup for today. So out here, I'm at the furthest position. I'm about 33 feet out, and this is where I have the end of one of the legs of the dipole connected. Uh, I'm using S-clip carabiners, overhand knots, and in this case, I didn't even deploy my trekking poles, mostly because I had a bush nearby. We're only at four feet. This is a NVIS deployment on a 40 meter dipole. Uh, I built just before this outing a couple days ago. The uh, support for the center mast is my carbon six carbon fiber mast. It is staked in with a small uh, 12 inch or 18 inch uh, camping stake. And I believe I only have about five sections of uh, the mast, so it ends pretty short here. Uh, the dipole that I created is based on a BNC binding post. I did an Envis video on this build. The only thing I did differently on this build is that there are uh, two four millimeter banana plugs and I taped everything down with electrical tape to an old wire winder. Uh, for the wire, I'm using 26 gauge uh, stranded silicone wire. It's really nice, flexible stuff. Uh, for the feed line, I have RG316 uh, feed line. It's about 12 feet and it's going into the Yesu FT818ND. Uh, everything else is just my normal tarp shelter. I deployed solar before I got out here. And then let's go ahead and go down to the other end. So about 33 feet out. Again, we're probably now only at about three feet here. And that contact was still possible. And then here we have the uh, trekking pole uh, deployed with another uh, S-clip carabiner. Uh, I left about 12 inches here just in case I need to tune for uh, another band but uh, pretty straightforward setup. So guys, really the bottom line here is throw the ARRL handbook out the window. It's a fantastic academic reference. My advice is get out, do your homework, practice, and we just literally made that contact 265 miles planned, point to point, running low power. I was running just six watts on my end, and uh, I think Mike was also running QRP. I forget how much he's running. But just shows to show you that you can actually have everything deployed in a very field expedient manner. Morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So today we're gonna do a little bit of an after action report. I hope you enjoyed that exercise. I know it was a bit skip level going from uh, episode one, two, and then to episode three, but I think it's actually valuable that we're having this conversation now because it's gonna set a very important expectation and tone for all you newbies. And I don't wanna tell you what to do. I actually don't know crap about radio. I don't know, I'm not an expert on anything. But I have found, personally, that there are three things that um, have served me well. And I'm gonna come up with an acronym that we're gonna call GSP, or GOLF, Sierra, Papa, and it's gonna stand for gear, skills, and planning. And that is exactly how we were able to do what we did today. So let's start in reverse order. Uh, let's start with the plan first. So uh, Mike reached out and said, hey, I wanna establish a contact. I'm gonna be traveling, I'll be in Utah. And uh, the first thing we did was uh, use a tool online called VOACAP, and we performed uh, basically an analysis. And there's 
the tool is fairly straightforward to use. I'll show you how to do this in a future video, but basically it's designed for RF engineers where you can one, establish the uh, day of week, time of day, and also enter in your location, the other station's location, um, your antenna heights and systems, and it will give you a prediction on which bands at which windows in the day work best. So that's where we started. So I knew I was in Utah, or I knew that Mike was in Utah and I was in Arizona, and I plugged in all that information. And based on historical experience, I knew that given that we were gonna do a 1500 UTC or 8 a.m. local time uh, targeted window, the best band based on how physics work, yeah, physics is a thing, is the 40 meter band. So knowing that, we went ahead and um, built our own antennas. But the other cool thing about the uh, VOACAP analysis tool, which we'll talk about later, is that you can also put in the power of your radio and the mode. So I had entered in all that information. Uh, basically, I set it at five watts, uh, said the antenna height was gonna be fairly low, and it said that we would have a 94% chance of making this contact. So that was key. Uh, so that was the first phase of the planning. The second thing is that the amateur radio waves are uh, available to everybody. So in our little plan here, we established three different frequencies on the 40 meter band, a primary, uh, an alternate, and a contingency. And the thought there was that if anybody was sitting on a frequency having an active uh, QSO, we would just go down in that sequence. So absolutely love the planning. Now we are running very low power and I want to debunk a couple of the amateur radio myths. And as a new ham, it drove me crazy. Uh, there are these things called, or people called OMs or old men. And they're the guys that believe you have to have a 65 foot tower, LMR 400, uh, 1500 watts of power. And you know, just every connector has no loss. Well, bullshit, sorry. Yeah, fuck, I got demonetized. Anyways, um, so the point to here is this little HF rig running five watts with a very small three amp hour battery with a, I don't know, 20 to $30 antenna that I built myself and some uh, high-ish loss feed line absolutely knocked that plan, plan contact out of the water. So planning and then some gear. Actually, let's talk about gear a little bit. So first, Thing you want to take away is don't listen to these guys get out get your license um, and start practicing and training so like i said we, we ran uh, my little man pack radio i did a video on the yesu ft818 nd uh, it was pretty warm by the end of those contacts and this thing did not overheat um, anyways nice little package a very small battery in fact that's the other thing to keep in mind there's a lot of junk in here and pull some of this stuff out. So by going with this five watt rig, I was able to uh, need less power. And all I basically brought with me was this little three amp hour battery, a solar charge controller, and a little tiny 10 watt folding panel. This was my entire power system. Now this won't work for everybody, but out here in the Sonoran Desert where I have full sun, this worked perfectly. Now you could always scale up the battery and the panels based on your needs. So I just wanna make the point, low power radio means you have a lot less power uh, consumption requirements. Great, cool. The other thing we did was we made our own dipole antennas. And the dipole is uh, a very simple antenna that you can make, it's very field expedient. I have this in the field if needed. And the reason why we wanted to build our own antennas is that we wanted what we call a resonant antenna. And that is an antenna that is designed for a given uh, frequency range. So knowing that we were gonna be on 7.2 megahertz, I actually cut the length of this antenna specifically for that frequency. And what that means is all six watts that come out of this radio should be effectively radiated out here. Uh, a lot of hams will also tell you you need to have an antenna tuner. And yeah, that's great to have in a pinch, but the problem is the antenna tuner will actually uh, fake the radio or tell the radio, like basically lie to it and say, hey, I've got a good match when I don't, and you end up wasting a lot of RF energy in the form of heat. So the having the correct antenna 
is absolutely critical. So we'll get into I intend design later. I'll put a video up if I haven't mentioned that already on how I did this build. And then we don't have trees, so I was just using the uh, carbon six carbon fiber mast. And I don't know, is this about an 18 inch camping stake and uh, two trekking poles at the end to guide out. So gear wise, we were good to go. Uh, planning, good to go. Now let's talk about um, the second one, which is Sierra and skills. So if you want to do what we did today, in addition to buying all the crap and putting a plan together, you do need to get your license. And in the US, you'll have to get your technician class license, the entry level one, and then your general. And that is basically it. You can do a lot with that. So uh, I know it's going to be work, but like I said, there are no free lunches. So to do everything we did today, GSP, Golf, Sierra Papa, Gears, Skills, and Planning. All right, let's uh, wrap this up real quickly. So let's talk about some of the fails, and there were three. Uh, the first was I decided to check email longer than I should have before I went on my outing, and I left about 15 minutes late. So I literally had to do four kilometers across the desert much faster than I wanted to, and had to kind of rush to set up uh, my site. But the saving grace was I do this a lot and I have my gear dialed in. So the deployment of the antennas with the guy system and the shelters, I do that pretty much every single weekend. So training saved the day uh, to make up for my bad uh, late start. Uh, the second thing is that uh, we tried to have a emergency a communication plan if HF failed and it was to use VHF and something called APRS. We're gonna do a video on that as part of the series. Unfortunately, the radio I had and the antenna I had on it and my distance and my position of being in a valley prevented us from uh, using that, but this is why we have multiple radios, antenna systems, and uh, alternate forms of communication in our little combo plan established. Uh, Mike had better success than I did. I did receive uh, his message, but only through uh, the cell network later, which in my mind is sort of a, a fail. Now there was a third uh, fail I wanted to talk about. Oh, yes. And it was something that uh, Mike sent me in his after action report. Uh, and it goes back to our conversation on antennas. So we both ran the Yesu FT818ND and we actually both have an antenna tuner designed for it called the Z817. I've only used mine once and never use it, period. Uh, he brought his plan to use it, and one of the pins on his cable was uh, damaged. And the takeaway there is, every time you add a new component to your system, you add complexity and a failure point. The good news is, just like I did, he decided to cut uh, an antenna specifically for the frequency he wanted to work, and it saved the day, as you can see. So guys, um, I could go on forever on this topic, uh, but, Stick around for the next episode. We're going to talk about uh, simplex communication and bring it back to the technician class license. So don't forget GSP, Golf, Sierra, Papa, gear, skills, and planning. With that said, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Mm. I also changed my hat so you can see more of my face. And I'm experimenting with my wife's lamps here. She's still sleeping, so I guess we're cool. Let me know if the dungeon is less dungeony. All right. Bye, guys. Oh, shoot. We should have recorded. <laughs>